In the early universe, there were no galaxies. Today, there are many billions. How did they form? Astronomers use the fundamental laws of physics to deduce the basic story of galaxy formation. Galaxies form out of immense clouds of gas that collapse and rotate. As they evolve, stars form within them. Entire galaxies can collide, changing their appearance. Looking deep into space, we see galaxies at earlier stages in their lives, and learn more about their evolution. They are more numerous, display unusual shapes, and have episodes of energetic outbursts. Galaxies can be seen back to more than 10 billion years ago. Observations by Hubble Space Telescope, James Webb Telescope and ground-based instruments show that the first galaxies took shape as little as 1 billion years after the Big Bang which probably took place about 13 billion to 14 billion years ago. There are two leading theories to explain how the first galaxies formed. The truth may involve a bit of both ideas. One says that galaxies were born when vast clouds of gas and dust collapsed under their own gravitational pull, allowing stars to form. The other, which has gained strength in recent years, says the young universe contained many small, lumps, of matter, which clumped together to form galaxies. Hubble Space Telescope has photographed many such lumps, which may be the precursors to modern galaxies. According to this theory, most of the early large galaxies were spirals. But over time, many spirals merged to form ellipticals. The galaxy formation process has not stopped. Our universe continues to evolve. Small galaxies are frequently gobbled up by larger ones. The Milky Way may contain the remains of several smaller galaxies that it has swallowed during its long lifetime. The Milky Way is digesting at least two small galaxies even now, and may pull in others over the next few billion years. Galaxy mergers happen fairly often. A large portion of the bright galaxies that we see today may have formed from the mergers of two or more smaller galaxies. Mergers are common because the universe is crowded on the galactic distance scale. The disk of the Milky Way, for example, spans about 100,000 light years. The nearest major galaxy, the Great Spiral in Andromeda, which is a little bigger than the Milky Way, is about 2.5 million light-years away. That means the distance between these two galaxies is only about 25 times greater than the sizes of the galaxies themselves. That doesn't leave a lot of elbow room for galaxies. Galaxies are very massive, too, so their gravity is strong. When you crowd them together, the attraction can be so strong that two galaxies latch onto each other and don't let go. Eventually they merge, forming a single giant city of stars. The largest galaxies are giant ellipticals. They look like eggs or footballs. They can be ten times the Milky Way's size and contain more than a trillion stars. Such galaxies probably formed when two or more spirals, like the Milky Way, merged to form a single galaxy. One bit of evidence supporting the merger theory is the large number of ellipticals in dense clusters of galaxies, where mergers must be common. 
Two giant ellipticals dominate the center of the densely packed coma cluster, for example. And the heart of the Virgo cluster contains three giant ellipticals that each span almost one million light years. Mergers can take anywhere from a few hundred million to a few billion years to complete. They can trigger intense bursts of new star formation, and even create gigantic black holes. The emergence of these first stars marks the end of the Dark Ages, in cosmic history, a period characterized by the absence of discrete sources of light. Understanding these first sources is critical, since they greatly influenced the formation of later objects such as galaxies. The first sources of light act as seeds for the later formation of larger objects. Additionally, the first stars that exploded as supernovae might have collapsed further to form black holes. The black holes started to swallow gas and other stars to become objects known as mini-quasars, which grew and merged to become the huge black holes now found at the centers of nearly all massive galaxies. Stars remain unscathed. Galactic collisions rarely produce head-on wrecks between individual stars. Even when two galaxies ram together, the distance between stars is enormous. Yet stars can suffer ill effects from the collisions. They can be thrown into new orbits, or even thrown clear of their parent galaxies into intergalactic space. While galactic collisions rarely destroy stars, they often create them. As vast clouds of gas and dust in merging galaxies slam together, they can create thousands or even millions of new stars. Viewers what do you think about this, give your feedback in comments, if you like the video then press like button, which will motivate us to do better. If you are new to our channel, then subscribe our channel for more upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.